Hello everyone and welcome to Math Analytics Masterclasses. This is season two, in which we try to focus more on the data transformation and processing for some of the variables that are part of your marketing mix modeling project. In this course, we'll be shedding more light onto what I call the calendar variables, things like dummies, step variables, uh, 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 trends, etc., etc., would be the topics that will be covered during this course. My name is Ramla, and I am the co-founder and CEO of Mass Analytics. Calendar variables are variables that are created from scratch, in the sense that they are not created out of other variables. They are generally used to model the impact of external and uncontrollable factors, or sometimes the impact of specific events. Now, once you create those variables, you can process them further or you can transform them further. For example, you can apply a lag or a decay to a dummy or a trend that you have created initially as a calendar variable. Dummy variables. Dummy variables are generally created in order to model the impact of known or unknown events or factors. However, you have to be very careful when you create your dummy variables because you do not want to create an excessive amount of dummy variables when you don't know the significance of. So please make sure that any time you create a dummy variable that you have an explanation behind the creation of this dummy. What happens when you create many dummies that you don't know the explanation of, you can run into the risk of overfitting the model, which is again very, very dangerous. For example, the product went out of stock for four periods, and we know exactly when this happened. So what we ended up doing is we have created a series of four dummies in order to model the impact of being out of stock during these four periods. Now, when we create a dummy variable like this, meaning that we have one variable that contains four dummies, we are assuming in a way that the impact of out stock is the same across the four times that we went out of stock. If you want to model the fact that for certain periods, the out of stock could have had a bigger or a smaller effect than the rest, what we need to do is to probably apply different weights to those dummies or split the dummies. Trends and part trends. Trend variables are generally created in order to model the gradual increase or the gradual decrease of a specific modeled KPI. Now you have to be very careful when you create your trends because like the dummies, you don't want to create trends that you don't know the explanation of and you can run into the problem of overfitting your data. For example, I observe that there is a market expansion and the market is increasing for us and the competitor. And I can also see that my sales are trending upwards. So what I can do, I can create a trend to model that effect, but I know that the explanation behind that trend is the market expansion and I have variables that can actually back up the creation of this particular trend. Another example for using or creating trends is, for example, modeling the effect of a new product launch or a product delist. It could also be to model the fact that we have a new store that has opened or a store that has closed, etc., etc. So all these are examples that could be leveraged in order to use or explain the usage of a trend in your modeling exercise. Window. We generally create windows in order to model uh, factors or variables that stretch over time. So dummy is for one period, one week, for example, or one month, or we can have a series of four dummies in four separate periods. Whereas when we want to create a window, it means that you have a successive uh, sequence of dummies, and that means that there is an event that is stretching over time for which we need to create a window in order to consider it in the modeling phase. For example, in the context of a retail client that operates through different stores, we know that there has been a period where there has been a store opening. And we need to create a window variable in order to model the fact that at a certain period of time, we started having or seeing that new store. So the window will start at the, at the date at which the store has opened and will continue on until the end of the model period. Another application or example of the usage of the step uh, or, or the window variable is, for example, to model the impact of competition. 
Again, in the context of retail client, I know that a competitor has opened at a specific date, and I expect that that opening of the competitor could have an impact negative on my sale. And that's where I'll be using the window uh, uh, processor in order to create a step that will model the uh, opening of the competitor. And I would expect that this variable would come in with a negative coefficient in my sales because it is meant to steal from my sales. Intervals. In essence, intervals is kind of a variable that presents different windows. For example, in a specific time period, we have run different promotions in different time periods, and I want to model this. So what I need to do is to use the interval processor to create a variable that will be active each time that you have a promotion. But because I had four promotional periods, for example, we will have a variable that will have four windows at the same time. Here is an example uh, from the retail industry. Uh, so in this context, the retailer uh, celebrates the anniversary of the business each year. And during two to three weeks, they will be offering all sorts of promotions to their customers. And because this event happens every single year uh, during a certain period, so that's why we have used the interval processor in order to create such a variable. Now, the coefficient that this variable will take later on in the modeling stage will actually measure the impact of those special promotional offers happening during the retailer anniversary on the, uh, on the sales uplift or the revenue. Periodic processors. Periodic processors are generally used in order to model repetitive phenomena. For example, payday. Payday generally happens on the 25th of each month. Using the periodic processor, we have created the variable that you can see on the screen, and that will take one each time that the 25th of the month happens on that week. Now, later on, using this variable in the model will tell us what is the impact of the payday on your sales. Here, the assumption is that when people get paid, they have the impression that they are, that they are richer than the rest of the month, and that's where they start consuming more from the brands that they prefer. And that's where we would expect that this variable could potentially have a slight positive impact on the sales. Thank you very much for watching. I hope these videos uh, added some increments to your marketing mix modeling knowledge. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more videos like this. Please comment in case you have any questions and it would be my pleasure to get back to you with all the answers that you are seeking in the context of these videos and in the context of marketing measurement and marketing mix modeling. Thank you very much.